Hi everyone, welcome to Type Talks. Today we have five signs you are not an EJ. So these would be the ENFJ, ENTJ, ESFJ, ESTJ types. And so Diane, would you like to give us your thoughts? Sure, the first, the first sign is being highly attuned and never questioning your own beliefs, values, desires as an individual separate from the group. If you do that often, you're not an EJ. EJ types, because they have an identity function as their last function, so FI or TI, it's hard for them to feel confidence in their beliefs, values, and desires without looking at the group too. And so if you are highly attuned to these and never compare them or contrast them with the group, it's likely that you may not be an EJ type, that you might have an identity function higher than the fourth position. Yeah, I agree with, with what you said, Joyce, in that um, it's hard to really understand even your own beliefs um, without first understanding the group's, group's beliefs and doing that comparison like you described. So there is that checking in that EJs do. And so that leads us to our second sign. And that's if you have a strong need for self-expression and differentiation as an individual, you're probably not an EJ. And this leads back to the identity function being last, and it should be your biggest struggle if you're an EJ. Yeah, so as an EJ, um, when there is a lot of self-expression and differentiation from the group, especially early on in life, it, it becomes almost an annoyance when people do that. You don't understand how someone, it, it feels to an EJ, it feels almost selfish. I think as you grow and mature and you start to blend your introverted judging function, um, you start to see the benefit in that. But I think early on, that's a big struggle. Yeah, exactly. Being selfish, not considering the group can be annoying for the EJ. It's like for the TJ, why are you making things less efficient for everyone? And the FJ is like, why are you being so inconsiderate to the group and their emotions and that your emotional impact on them? Why are you not considering the group connection in your decisions? And so there's gonna be overlap with these EJ qualities that we mentioned from TJs and FJs too, just because of the shared EJ-ness. All right, another sign that you are not an EJ is that you prefer spontaneity over planning in most situations, not just in times of rest and relaxation. Yeah, and I would say that EJs in general need to start with a plan. Um, and so if you're the kind of person who really wants to be free flowing all the time at work, in your day to day, in your family life, sort of across all aspects of your life, you're probably not an EJ. But an EJ absolutely enjoys being spontaneous in times of rest and relaxation and vacation. They're very good at going with the flow. Um, but in, in the times that matter, a plan is what's trusted. And then the next sign that you're not an EJ um, is that you have frequent hesitation with getting into action. EJs are quick to take action. Um, and so if you tend to hold back often, you're probably not an EJ. Because the more you hesitate, the more you're not getting the thing done in a TE way or you're not helping the group in any sort of way. Like the time to act is passing. The window of the best time to act is passing. And I think that's my, that might be why EJs like to plan, because if you plan, you can really make decisions that optimize how you make those decisions for the group. And so if you hesitate, then you're missing the windows of opportunity to be the, of the most benefit to the people around you. Exactly. And even when you do have a plan, if things go sideways, EJs are also good at sort of changing in the moment and being spontaneous, but it's all based on the comfort of having that plan to sort of riff off of. Mm. Well said. And so the last sign is feeling energized across the board from having downtime. Yeah. Um, that's not an EJ quality. EJs tend to like to be busy, whether it's FE and helping make sure that everyone has what they need to feel good, or whether it's TE and making sure you're being efficient and getting everything checked off your list. Being busy is the flow of, a, of an EJ in general. Um, and so if you have a lot of downtime, especially if it's alone, 
for a little while that can be nice and it can be recharging but the longer it goes on the more ej feels anxious um they need to get into action they need that group to feel connected they need that group to have a purpose um and so too much downtime is is almost unnerving i think for most ejs absolutely whereas you'll see some other types enjoying their long lengthy naps Right. As an ENFJ, like I can't even imagine naps. Of course I can imagine naps, but I can't. I've tried. I, I can't take a nap. I have too many things that are that are pulling my attention. It's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like if you have downtime, then maybe there's that guilty feeling of being selfish too and not spending time looking at the group and helping the group in some sort of way. Yeah, that's a good point. Because even as I've I've grown into more development within NI as an ENFJ, um, I have found that it does feel selfish if I'm not spending that downtime sharpening NI in order to help the group. It's not for me. It's not daydreaming. It's not, you know, thinking about fun things. Typically, it's trying to figure out um, what the group needs and, and how I can I can be a better coach, how I can be a better mom, how I can be a better pharmacist, all of those things. It goes back to the quality of feeling a sense of obligation to take care of what's around you, whether it's the system around you or the people around you. And so why spend time just doing nothing when you could be doing something in service of the collective or the systems collective even? All right. And so thanks, Diane, for coming out and sharing your EJ wisdom as an ENFJ yourself. You have a lot of insights and warmth. I'm always loving your sing-songy voice. It makes me feel hugged by your presence as a person. And so thanks, everyone, for watching. I hope this helped you understand EJ types better. And I'll see you all in the next episode.